the, the Cheney thing. Do, do we really have to do that? Uh, hmm. Finally, somebody asked the question that I've been wanting the campaign to be asked since they have embraced the Cheney endorsements. Tim Walls on Jon Stewart last night, and I'll get to uh, Walls' response to this question. I'm also going to get to the clip from Chris Matthews of MSNBC and his thoughts on uh, the whole Liz Cheney thing, which I got thoughts on that. But then later on, a better clip, Naomi Klein, author and journalist, and her thoughts on the campaign. And I completely agree with her. But let's start first with this clip. Why the Cheneys? How is that? The, the Cheney thing. Do, do we really have to do that? Uh, look, I it goes broader than that. Look, Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift. No, 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 no. Oh, the shooting? No, no, no. Having the Cheneys on board? No. You can't Dick Cheney or Taylor Swift. No. We're a big ten. We're a big ten. What country did Taylor Swift get us to invade? No. No, don't don't you think, though, that, and I do this, I believe this. Yeah. There is still a core group of folks out there. You know, your point being, and not joke, the the. The don't tread on me, the Reagan piece of this, the the libertarian piece, uh, but the constitutional piece. Yes. There are a lot of people out there. I think I think Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney give permission to those folks who want to find a reason to do the right thing. It doesn't mean they agree with us. We're not going to take their foreign policy decisions and discussions, you know, and implement those. We're going to take Pro their, uh, Pro their promise. Yes, promise. <laughs> promise. <laughs> Any of those yeah. First off, it's really incredible that John Stewart continues to be the only one of the only actual journalists that are following these campaigns. How has this question not been posed? It's... <laughs> CNN, MSNBC, whoever it is, they, their view on politics is so within a bubble where they view it just based around these politicians in Washington on the national scale as opposed to looking at policy or looking at the popularity of these candidates or these individuals. Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, these are not popular people. They're not popular with Democrats, obviously. They aren't popular with independents. They aren't popular with Republicans. I still, to this day, do not know why you would think it's a strategic move to embrace the Cheneys. It's possible there are a few people out there that are moved by these sorts of embracing of the Cheneys. And by embracing, I mean... Harris is doing campaign events with Liz Cheney. <laughs> it's, it's one thing to, you know, have an endorsement out in the ether. You can't control it. It's another to bring the person into your campaign, the person that is not popular and may actually be hurting you. This is the, even if there is, you know, a handful of people that for some reason are now turned on to Kamala Harris are going are to vote because Liz Cheney's endorsement, you are, that is offset by the kind of people you are losing by not embracing the base, by not talking to people that would come out to vote for you if you spoke to their issues and focused the campaign on hope, on the joyous campaign you had in the first month, on embracing a progressive policy that is popular in a majority. But look at, the, this is the one thing I wish John would have brought up in that questioning, the polling. The polling since the Harris campaign has taken a turn to the right to try and appeal to more Republican conservative voters. So nationally, it's narrowed, as you can see here. Uh, the height of the Harris campaign was around the end of August. This is during the, the DNC. Then the Harris speech at the DNC, the foreign policy section was kind of dark and was a hint at things to come. This is when they began to try and appeal more to conservative voters as the, the uh, polling narrowed a bit and then continues to narrow to the point where it is now under 2% difference between Harris and Trump. Now, of course, national polling doesn't matter as much as state by state. States like Michigan. Look at this. Wide lead here. Wide, you know, uh, considering where things tend to be in these states, but wide, uh, her widest lead was late August. Then again, the move towards the right, a little bump here during the, uh, or after the, the debate, but again, narrowed to the point where Harris is now up by only 0.2% uh, on average in Michigan. Wisconsin, another popular or important state here. Look at the where it was. Late August. Again, this is the height of the hope campaign, of joy, of, of clowning Republicans, calling them weird. The height of all of that. 
And then they moved to the right. They took on some moronic advisors that thought it was a good idea to move them to the right and look at where things have gone. Why would the vast, the vast majority of Republican voters, of conservative voters, why would they vote for Kamala Harris when they have Trump and they've been with Trump since the beginning? So yeah, you may be peeling off a few people who don't like Trump. I'm, of course, those people exist. But it is, not, it is being offset. This turn to the right is being offset by the kind of people in your base that you are potentially losing who are now who weren't interested under Joe Biden, who had lost interest uh, in supporting him because of of how uh, far right he was moving, particularly on foreign policy. And now Harris just sort of being a continuation of that, at least in terms of her campaigning. Look where it is. This is just, it's, it's stupid politics. It's stupid. It's wrong both in terms of policy and it's wrong in terms of what is successful in a campaign. That I know people, some people watching this are like, so you're going to support Trump? No, I'm not supporting Trump. <laughs> I'm just pointing out the obvious here that this campaign would be doing better and I want them to do better. And they'd be doing better if they were appealing to the 40% of people that don't normally vote. But many of those people would vote Democrat if they are properly engaged with. Let me get to the Chris Matthews clip. This clip from MSNBC. I'm a, I feel, it feels like they bring out Chris Matthews every few months. This guy retired like five years ago. But every now and then, they, they're like, all right, we need the dumbest idea possible. Who can we call? And they get Chris Matthews, and <laughs> they wheel him out for garbage like this. I've never seen a more heroic figure than Liz Cheney. Uh, she lost her, her state probably forever. She lost her party. She lost her leadership in the Republican House. She could have been on, going, been on her way to speaker. It was very probable. She gave it all away in the interest of truth. That's what she stood for. It's amazing to me how few people have gotten behind her. But now one person that's got behind her is Kamala Harris. And those sitting together, those two women, as you say, on that stage is remarkable because there's such courage there from Liz Cheney. And I, I, have, I cannot say anything that, I, that would stop me from saying she's been unbelievable. And I think now yeah. if they use her for the next two weeks. I also want to say something about the Democrats. If you're going to use mm -hmm. her, repay her when you get in office. Don't just act like you're giving a little nod to a Republican. Clean up some of your act. You've got problems, Democrats. This is the perfect distillation of how so much of media views electoral politics. And by the way, I'm going to get to the, the Naomi Klein clip, which is going to be a palate cleanser after watching that trash. But this thing where we lavish praise onto people who do the bare minimum, politicians who do the bare minimum, while chastising actual leaders who dare challenge the corporate status quo. There's no one that Chris Matthews hates more than Bernie Sanders. He once compared Bernie Sanders to Germany's invasion of France in 1940. Sanders, an actual leader for the people within the confines of, of Washington, D.C. But no, Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney, who voted with Trump, 92 point, what is it? I have it here. 92.9% of the time voted with Trump. This is a person who endorsed Trump twice. And in 2020, claimed that socialism has a chokehold on the Democrats. This was just four years ago, pushing wild conspiracies about the Democratic Party. Also, at that time, Chasey, uh, Chasey, Cheney accused Harris of supporting infanticide, announcing on national television after Biden had selected the California senator as his running mate that Harris backed, quote, abortion up until the ninth month and beyond. Cheney then proceeded to dismiss Harris's qualifications as a former elected prosecutor, state attorney general, and U.S. senator by claiming that, quote, Joe Biden clearly decided that he was going to make a choice based on somebody's gender, based on their race, and based on his need to placate the very far socialist left of his party. This is Liz Cheney just four years ago. Look, it's good that she has decided that it's good for her career to now uh, support Kamala Harris, because let's be clear, that's what happened here. Liz Cheney didn't want to continue going on having to defend Donald Trump, but she did it for a very long time, and not just defend him, went out there on behalf of him, excusing his garbage for a very long time, helping to bolster 
his xenophobia, his racism, his absolute trash. And now we're supposed to, uh, Chris Matthews thinks that Democrats should be rewarding her for doing the bare minimum, not supporting a guy who tried to steal the election. That is deserving of an important position. This is clearly what he's arguing for. An important position within the Harris camp, or the the Harris uh, administration. Completely insane. But... This, these are the kinds of people that the media loves to reward. People that will, uh, you know, oh, they're bu- look at this maverick bucking her party. This is benefiting her own career to do this. After losing her race in her own state, Cheney, what is Cheney going to do? Again, no one, no one likes her. <laughs> so she has tried to save her own career by attaching herself like a leech to somebody who, who is popular and was a lot more popular, Kamala Harris, before the leech uh, attached herself to Harris. Just, it's been disgusting to watch. Let me get now to the palate cleanser. This is uh, <laughs> Naomi Klein, author, activist, journalist, with her thoughts on what the Harris campaign has been doing. I am not a fan of Harris's campaign, um, the choices she's made. I think she's running an extremely high risk, dangerous campaign because she is trying to win without the base. Um, you know, and she's sending a message to that base that, sorry, you know, I'm more interested in Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney and getting Republicans than I am interested in listening to Palestinians, to Muslims, to Arabs, to the left generally, to the a- anti-war forces. She's told us we're irrelevant. And Trump is telling us that he's going to round us up. Um, so this is nobody would would, would want this election. Um, but we have we've got to be smart. I want to be clear here. I think Kamala Harris is still the favorite, even if it's a slim uh, favorite. I do think if you have the ability to vote, if you're an American, absolutely vote for Kamala Harris. You want to avoid Donald Trump. That said, just based on how the campaign is running itself. The Harris campaign could have been running away with this, at least to a much wider margin, wider than, you know, 1%. If they had continued on the joyous campaign that they had in the first month, where they were clowning Republicans, calling them weird, and backing progressive popular policy. If that had continued, as well as on the foreign policy front, and Kamala Harris, you know, made a shift uh, away from where Biden has been on that into a more humane direction... This could be a much different campaign right now, but it's narrowed and the shift is clear. It's narrowed since they have gone more conservative. That is very obvious. But these consultants, this consultant class that is just, their brains are so stuck in in DC think, they believe that, oh, because people identify as more conservative or independent than they identify as more liberal, then that means they like Liz Cheney. People... This is, I've brought this up many times, the polling on how people self-identify liberal uh, or conservative. People don't know what those labels mean. Those labels mean different things to different people. You have to look at actual policy and what is popular. If you look at actual policy, whether it's on healthcare, whether it's on uh, expanding the social the, the social safety net, whether it's on, on taxes, raising the minimum wage. I covered in a video yesterday, the McDonald's Trump thing. Trump didn't answer a question on the minimum wage, of course, because he doesn't support raising it. But looking at polling on that, a majority of Republicans support raising the minimum wage. And a majority of Democrats and independents support raising it to 17 bucks an hour. These are popular policies. But appealing to conservatives appears to be what all these Democrats on the national scale end up doing, and they wonder why these races get so close.